friends welcome to my channel neurology videos learn by seeing continuing with the neurogenic bladder now what we have understood that there is a cortical control cortical what what are the major centers which are involved that is paracentral lobule internal capsule thalamus hypothalamus okay then the second control it in these both these that is a cortex and the brainstem they forms a supraspinal in the brainstem which part plays a major role it is a pons and what is a center which is called pmc that is pontine migration center uh, other name for it is barrington nucleus then we have the medulla and the cerebellum now in the spinal cord which segments they play a major role that is a s2 s3 s4 in the anterior horn cells we have which nucleus on no nucleus okay and uh, between the bladder and these segments we have the nerves the since uh, the roots they will form the feeling of distension and pain goes by sensory arc to these segments and the local control is there and then the from these roots the ventral motor root is formed and these plays a motor these will form the motor arc okay there is sensory arc motor arc then there are s2 s3 s4 segments of spinal cord then we have brain stem and the cortex so any at any the any of these levels lesion can occur and form can cause various type of various disease which will come under neurogenic bladder now major categories are first we have if the lesion is present at the level of cortex what is a lesion then it is then what will it cause it will cause a disinhibited disinhibited bladder in cortical that is in the disinhibited bladder what will happen that, that there is the loss of cortical control patient will have the bladder sensation the tone of the bladder will be normal frequency precipitancy can be present and residual volume of urine is not there remember any of the lesion that is between the cortex and uh, above s2 the there will be no residual volume okay now second lesion it is between the uh, below the brain stem and above the s2 that is it is infrapontine suprasacral another first was the detrusor overactivity which was cortical bladder second it is also called dss that is detrusor sphincter dysenergia what will happen to the bladder sensation bladder sensation may be present may not be present and tone of the bladder it is increased so what will happen so there will be a small spastic bladder frequency precipitancy will be present and residual volume will be variable now what happens now we have the element bladder at what levels s2 s3 s4 sensory arc if sensory arc is involved if motor arc is involved so these three will call, lead to element bladder what will happen to in these if the lesion is present at the level of s2 s3 s4 that is a uh, conus uh, sorry corda so sensory and uh, motor root both are involved the bladder sensation will be absent the tone will be decreased there will not be patient is not aware of the bladder fullness and the tone it has decreased what will happen there will be the storage of urine in the bladder so there will be lot of residual volume of urine okay in sensory paralytic bladder the sensory arc it is damaged that is sensory any disease of sensory root dorsal root ganglia posterior column the sensory supply will be will not be present so bladder sensation patient will not be aware of bladder and the tone will decrease the residual volume will increase similarly in motor paralytic bladder the motor palatic bladder what will happen patient is able to patient is aware of the filling of the uh, of the filling of the bladder but since this motor root it is affected what will happen the awareness of the bladder will be present tone will be decreased and the residual volume will be increased so patient will have the retention of urine hello friends welcome to my channel neurology videos learn by seeing if you are tuning to this channel first time subscribe it to get the maximum neurology videos